my channel. Joining me once again is my brother. Please reintroduce yourself to the folks. Hi everyone, my name is Balatron. This is our review of Avengers Infinity War. I give the movie an A minus. And I give the movie an A plus. Marvel's Avengers Infinity War. This movie was 10 years in the making. This movie was about Marvel's ultimate villain, Thanos, with his goal of capturing all the Infinity Stones. And he accomplished that goal. And with that goal, he wiped out half of the sentient beings in the universe. Yes, it was very exciting, very thrilling, very surprising, and highly ambitious. Uh, it broke the mold in many ways, and it was just fantastic from top to bottom. We've got a lot of stuff to cover. So first we're going to talk about a couple of things that we didn't like about the movie, despite our very high grades. There were a couple of things that we did like about the movie. We're going to talk about the things that we loved about the movie. And we're going to talk about things that going forward we hope will happen with the sequel and the future of the MCU. So our first dislike comes to the usage of the Infinity Stones. Uh, we each had a different uh, issue with that, so uh, Balatron, why don't you start off with your issue about how the Infinity Stones were utilized in the movie. My issues were the superheroes that were in possession of the Infinity Stones, Doctor Strange with the Time Stone, and Vision with the Mind Stone. I know superheroes sometimes have this moral standard that they must abide by, they must not use it, they might don't ever get corrupt using this great power. But in my mind, Doctor Strange had the time stone. With that power of time, Doctor Strange could have frozen time where he could freeze Thanos where he is and they could have just beat him up or grab the golem while he was still frozen in time. Or Doctor Strange could have traveled back in time where Thanos was the baby and just do something when he was a baby or or with Thanos right there, Doctor Strange could use the magic spell and zap Thanos to another time zone. Something just use the time zone to advantage Doctor Strange, or with Vision with the Mind Stone. I was Vision could have gone all Professor X against Thanos, just get into his head, get into his head, control his mind. Tell Thanos what you're doing is wrong. Stop what you're doing. Stop what you're doing. Just give up the stones and or use the power of the stones and just bring turn everything back to normal. Just Vision use the Mind Stone. Use it. You have the power. Use it to your advantage. Stop the villain. Use it. <laughs> and on. That note, but not quite on mine yet. Uh, the Infinity Gauntlet itself, you know, Thanos wants to eliminate half of the universe because he believes that there's limited resources. But you have the Infinity Gauntlet, so you can change the universe however you want. Uh, you can make more resources. You can change everyone's physiology so they rely on like like solar power more than eating food. Uh, you can go back in time and stop your people from decimating each other. And it's like, when you wipe out half of the universe, are you also wiping out the other half cultures that you already attacked? Or is it just the ones that haven't attacked yet? It's just like, it's so limited, the uses. And as far as my particular problem with the Infinity Stones, it was like, each time he was trying to gather a stone, it came down to threatening a particular person. So like he used the Power Stone to threaten Thor to get the Space Stone from Loki. And then he had to go get the... Uh, Reality, reality Stone, Stone thank you. Reality Stone. Mm -hmm. And he seemed to be threatening the collector, but the collector may have already been dead or something like that, or at least escaped, but still. And then after he got, he showed that he had the Reality Stone, he threatened Gamora. That didn't work out, but soon there was, there was a threat. And then he had to go try to get Gamora to tell him where this uh, Soul Stone is. So he's threatening uh, Nebula. And then when he finally tried to the Soul Stone, he has to go kill uh, Gamora. And then we're trying to get the Mind Stone, he has to uh, go against uh, Vision. It's like, all these people, like, you know, they like, like Vision, like, yeah, you know, just destroy it now, destroy it now. No, we don't, we don't trade lives, like, or, or, or we could just destroy it now. <laughs> so, yeah, it's like, if the viewers just went to sacrifice or do something, uh, they could have been successful. And it was just annoying for over and over and over again that uh, one particular life was exchanged. Uh, to save that person, even though the fate of the galaxy 
countless trillions of lives in danger, but please save this one person. Spare this one person. Spare Tony Stark and I with this infinite power touch. I mean, Thanos even says, why aren't you using your most powerful gift? You know? <laughs> so yeah, in the movie, uh, 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 Dr. Shane's movie, it says, like, you know, you're not supposed to use the time stone, it could get corrupted and things like that. And Vision's still learning about the Mind Stone, and they, uh, Corvus Glaive, I think it was, uh, took him out very early, so he's you know, battle damage, something like that. But still, it's like, these are the infinity stones, and yet they're so used finitely <laughs> in the movie. And that just got so repetitive to see the thing. So, uh, which leads to my pop, my other problem with the Phoenix Stone, which is the Gamora. Now, a lot of people blame uh, Star Lord. You know, oh, Star Lord, if you could just kind of kept this cool, they would have got the gauntlet off. They would have got off. I blame Gamora. Gamora was the only person in the entire galaxy that knew where the Soul Stone was. Gamora has been witness to Thanos' cruelty. Gamora has killed in the name of Thanos and tortured in the name of Thanos. And some they have seen Nebula be tortured by Thanos. So it's like, I know you guys had that little heart to heart. You and Nebula, oh, your sisters now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like, you could have, she, she gave up in then less than a full minute of watching Nebula being tortured, even though she had her seen that dozens and dozens of times, never being tortured. And she's the only one who knows the source of the show. She knows she is truly the last line of the fist of the galaxy. She's going to be the baddest woman in the galaxy. And yet she's just like, oh, please save my sister now, train her all. It's like, it would have been better if uh, Thanos had like, okay, fine. Torture's not working. I will spare Nebula. I'll reinstate her original body, and I'll make sure she'll be among the people that survive if you give me the Soul Stone. Or, okay, I will get the Mind Stone. Once I get the Mind Stone, I'll just read your mind and find out where the Soul Stone is. Go get the Soul Stone. You know, something to break up that monotony. That, that, that was really, really, really annoying that the fate of the guys kept coming down to one particular person, one particular person, one particular person. The whole freaking galaxy, one particular person, one particular person. It was like, ugh. And one more other thing I quite didn't like about the movie was the Hulk. We noticed at the very beginning of the movie that Hulk fought Thanos, but unfortunately he lost. And after that scene, he was reverted back to his human form, Bruce, Bruce Banner, but he stayed in that form throughout the rest of the entire movie. He never turned back to the mean green Hulk fighting machine. So I was a little bit sad about that. Yeah. And some people have come in wide was the Hulk so scared the whole time? It's because the, what was the first time the Hulk got beat up. Now he's been defeated, like, you know, like the Abomination gave him a good run for his money, and Tony Stark was able to get that cool sucker punch with the you know, Hulkbuster armor. Thor held his own against Hulk, but still, Hulk has never been straight up beat. And when I watched the movie the second or third time, I watched to see if Thanos was using the Power Stone to fight the Hulk. I don't think he was. I think he straight up outclassed, outbeat, outboxed, and just whooped him. Now granted, because the trailers show the Hulk running in, that nice slow-mo pose with all the <laughs> Avengers, you know, you probably think, okay, at some point the Hulk's gonna fail. Maybe that was just for the trailers, maybe that's gonna be used in the sequel, but still, I gotta say when people wanted to see the Hulk, but it's like, no, he got beat up. And the Hulk comes from anger or anxiety. He was afraid, he had never been whooped. He got whooped, and when you whoop, get whooped the first time, you don't want to get back up, you want to hide in your body, you ain't doing this. So I loved that Hulk was afraid for the rest of the movie, uh, but obviously, being a big Hulk fan right here, uh, he definitely could have used more Hulk. <laughs> okay, now we're going to discuss what we really enjoyed about this movie. Now, as we said in the beginning, Avengers Infinity War, 10 years in the making. This movie had all the superheroes in the Marvel Cinematic Universe converged in one movie. So this movie showcased all the superhero teams, the Avengers, Guardians of the Galaxy, and newcomers to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Doctor Strange, and Spider-Man, showcased their powers and their strength quite well. And also, I love fight scenes, I love fight scenes in the movie, and this movie, superhero movie, had great battle scenes where the superheroes fought the Black Order, and or when they fought Thanos, and when they almost beat Thanos, but not quite. And also the big fight battles at the end on Wakanda. It was a great, big, dramatic, and it was wonderful. Yeah, now, uh, of course, not 
all all of the heroes in them because you no, know, there's a joke of where's Hawkeye and where's Ant Man and the Wasp. Hopefully that will be answered in the upcoming movie. I mean, they do get the line and say, "Well, they're under house arrest," uh, but still, uh, they they were ignored. So you know, that's definitely a great thing. And I was wondering how Mantis was going to work into this event because. We never saw her fight or anything, uh, but in the movie you see her like this, like she has like a nice praying mantis kind of fight, but she does have a fight scene in the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, so I was wondering how she's going to be used, but the way she's utilized with the mind uh -huh. melding on Thanos uh, was very effective and surprising, I like that. So there's a very excellent uh, uses of the heroes and their powers in the spectacular events uh, and everything. I also like that almost every single character on screen that speaks is some type of established character, including Pepper Potts, including uh, uh, Peter Parker's uh, nerdy friend, you know, the guy in the chair, you know, even like uh, Dr. Strange's cake can be considered a character and all that. Almost everyone that speaks is some type of established character. Only truly, truly pure new character was Gamora's mom, and she's just in it for a few moments. I count the uh, little uh, kid Gamora as the same character, just a little kid. But still, yeah, so there's a great character balance, great character usage, great fights. And what I love most is that this movie does not hold your hand at all, okay? It doesn't even really introduce the Black Order. Uh, they don't even say their whole names except for like Epi Ma and then it says, I assume the Ma is dead. So it's like, if you don't know who these characters are, if you don't know who these powers are, if you don't know what these backstories are, too bad! If <laughs> you've had plenty of time and plenty of movies and plenty of friends to tell me about well, so if you're coming here fresh off the boat and you don't understand what's going on, too bad for you. But I must say, the biggest surprise in this movie that I really enjoy, feeling Thanos, Thanos wins, Thanos wins. It's very rare that you see bad guys win. Alright, sometimes bad guys might win, but that's like a, a mid movie. But then at the end, the villains come back and beat the villain. But in this movie, at the end of the movie, the villain, Thanos, wins. Mm -hmm. And not only does he win, he wins emphatically. Uh, you take something like the Dark Knight where, yes, they did defeat the Joker, but the Joker corrupted Harvey Dent, and now they got to hide the fact that Harvey Dent went back for a little while for the public. Uh, you know, it's that, uh, vic it's a hollow victory or whatever or something like that. And you have movies like, uh, what, Seven? Where uh, the ultimate killer like presents himself and he wants uh, the good detective turned bad and things like that. No, but this is where the villain straight up wins. You know, he had a goal. He got the items. He and the, and the and for the most part, it follows the way a superhero movie is going to go. And when Thor hits that what should have been a killing blow, you know, you're ready to pick up your popcorn and stuff like. Okay, wait, great movie. Time to go on to the next thing. No. He's like, well, you should have gone over the head and snap. And it's like, wait, what? And now he wins. He gets away with it. He goes off to, you know, his home or planet where it just sticks in the sun. And the uh, heroes are like, what just happened? What just happened? And not only did he win, but they took out what I consider the money makers. And yeah, we know that these movies. Or they have movie, more movies coming out. We know we have a Spider-Man movie coming out. We, have, we know that they'll eventually make some type of Black Panther movie coming out. But still, it's like they took out Groot. They took out Spider-Man. How you know how difficult was it for Marvel for the fight to Spider-Man back? And now we're going to take them out. Or you know they take out Black Panther. Sure, they couldn't have known that Black Panther would have been that super duper successful. But still, it's like they took out all these major characters. It's like what? What? what, what? You took this person, you took out Loki. Some people were devastated just when Loki went down. They were just like <laughs> bewildered. <laughs> so like after I, you know, I saw the movie, I made that um, first impressions video. Cause I was like, I just gotta get my brain around this. I was like, he just straight up won. No, no difference. We, you know, how many times are like, you pro wrestling where the, the bad guy wins because he cheats or you know he uh, has his manager or valet do some outside interference or you know distracts the ref or whatever or it goes to a low blow. Like no, Thanos straight up. One, and it's been argued that he's pretty much the really the true protagonist of this movie, which is why it says at the end Thanos will return instead of the Avengers will return. But still, yeah, the villain won. What can I say? The villain won. Totally took to every other car, and you know, where do we go from here? <laughs> so 
high hill night. Where do we go from here? Well, when it comes to the future of the MCU, both the sequel and upcoming projects, we have similar topics, but on the opposite ends of the spectrum. Well, for me, I hope that everyone that unfortunately died in this Avengers movie, superheroes, civilians, aliens, whoever died in this movie, I hope they all come back to life. Yes, and you mean all as in pre-snap as well as the ones that faded away, right? Everyone. At, pre at the beginning of the movie, the Asgardians, people that got snapped and disappeared, so everyone comes back to life. It just started over like nothing happened. Now, I am on the opposite end. I don't want it to just be swept under the rug because you might as well just say it was all a dream or something like that. No, <laughs> I want the pre-snap people to stay dead. Because if you bring back one, you got to bring back them all. If you bring back Loki, you got to wonder, well, why didn't you bring back Amora or this person or Heimdall or that person? If you bring back Amora, oh, well, that's wonderful. But what about Loki and this person or that person? You know, you got to keep them dead. I mean, sure, there's going to be another Guardians movie. They can have Gamora as part of some type of dream sequence. Or maybe Gamora is trapped in the Soul Stone and maybe the mission is to... Uh, free her from the soul stone or something like that. You know, I can take that so that at the very end she did. But no, this has to matter. Too often in the MCU, they faked out deaths, except for Quicksilver. And again, if you bring back those other characters, then Poppy Scar Witch will say, Well, why don't you bring back my brother? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I want the pre snap people to stay dead. I want these deaths to mean something. They faked us out with Loki too many times. They faked us out with uh, Nick Fury. They faked us out with K Agent Coulson. No, no. This time, death is death. I mean, even uh, Bucky Barnes can be sort of considered a fake out, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, no, this time, death means something. Because if you don't, then every time they have, just have something big or surprising or someone dies, you're like, yeah, it'll be bad. It's like someone at Marvel or someone at Disney said, hey, Remember when Disney wasn't afraid to traumatize this audience? <laughs> Let's do that again! So yeah, keep those dead people dead! <laughs> now of course there are a couple other things that I would love to see going forward in the MCU. In fact, I made a video about it, uh, and there will be a link in the description. But uh, there's 10 topics, and obviously I'm not going to take over time because I have my wonderful guests here. So my wonderful guests, would you please, Mr. Balladron, tell them what you want to also see coming forward, or going forward, with the MCU. Well... Hopefully, with this agreement Disney made with Fox, if it goes through, I'd like to see the inclusion of the X-Men and Fantastic Four into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and also more cosmic beings like Silver Surfer, Adam Warlock. Because we know that there's a future project, Captain Marvel, she's going to have her own movie, so that's a, there's a powerful cosmic being coming all the way. But there's lots of more cosmic beings that hopefully will be utilized in future Marvel Cinematic Universe's projects. Yeah. At the time of this recording, uh, Disney is trying to acquire 20th Century Fox, but there's, uh, of course, some legal issues and other companies are trying to block it or assume 25. So hopefully, once it's all said and done, the Fantastic Four and the X-Men and various other characters can come back to the MCU, which will be coming back to the House of Mouse, but anyway, yeah, everyone can have that ultimate, that way like 10 years from now, we get that ultimate super duper crazy, I don't know, four or five hour <laughs> mega movie with all these characters, I don't know how they would do it, but you know, we definitely would love to see that happen. That is something we're definitely on the same page, and I think just about every Marvel fan, every superhero fan would love to see a truly ultimate epic super per hero team up film. <laughs> so here are our final thoughts on our movie, Avengers Infinity War. Again, me, Bellatron, I gave this movie an A minus. I would have given it an A plus, but the minor quirk that I had with the heroes that had the Infinity Stones that they did not use it to their advantage. Sometimes heroes just gotta drop your morals and just gotta get the job done. <laughs> use it and worry about the morals there, but Besides that side little quirk, I love everything about this movie. Great battles, all my favorite heroes were in the movie. You showed a great strength, their powers, it flowed very well. So it was awesome. And for myself, yes, there are some minor issues, but I love this movie way too much to give it anything less than an A. I haven't been that bewildered by a movie 
in a long time after I saw the movie, and we talked about it on the way out of the theater, and I got home, I just had to get on the computer and just get my thoughts together. I had another ticket to see the movie two days later, but part of me wanted to go see it the next day. Like, I was like, no, no, I have another ticket, already bought a ticket. I waited to, to you know, two days to see the ticket, and I still loved it. And then uh, the following week, uh, because it took a while for us to get together and do our review, I figured, okay, let me see it again. I'll see it in IMAX. I never really wanted to see anything in IMAX. I always see regular TV, regular t uh, movie screens are big enough, but I decided to see the IMAX guy, like, and I'm like, okay, fine, that was cool, you know, not much to do, but still, I really enjoyed this movie, and it's been a while since I've been that enthusiastic about seeing the movie over again. I could go see the movie again right now, and it, it, it's even harder because movies now come out, you know, three months after they get released or sometimes, so, but still, I just was enamored of this movie, top to bottom, I am very eager to see what comes next. Uh, so, yeah, definitely A plus from me. A minus from me. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Thank you, Valentine, for joining me for this review. I really appreciate it. Of course, I always enjoy joining your channel. Share my thoughts to your viewers. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Be sure to share whatever comments you want in the comment section. Once again, I am Hyde Hill Knight. I am Valentron. And remember, Find inspiration everywhere. Oh, uh, one more topic. Uh, as much as we love this movie, uh, we're kind of annoyed that the first and last on-screen deaths were black men. <laughs> this is not a horror film. This is not a horror film. Why? <laughs>